This week on Hot Ticket. Talking about the movie. Ben's big leap as a superhero. Time to give the devil his due. And it didn't make me feel stupid. That's good. He's the masked Avenger Daredevil. And Jennifer Garner's no angel. I didn't get your name. I didn't give it. And Ben's buddy Matt Damon lost in the desert with Ben's brother in Jerry. Plus... Nicole, Jack, Renee, the Oscar nominations are in. Look at these people. Now we'll tell you who they got right and who was robbed. Whoopsie daisy. That sends, I think, a terrible message to Hollywood. And don't you tell me I didn't try. A special look back at the nominees. We'll pick their greatest performances you probably never saw. This is one to go out to the video store and write. You really are talking about something that you know nothing about. Let the show begin. Our congratulations go out to Nicole Kidman, Renee Zellweger, Nicolas Cage, and all the stars going for Oscar gold. Welcome to Hot Ticket. I'm Leonard Malton. And I'm Joyce Kilhaywick. Coming up, our reactions to all the nominees. Plus, we'll pick some of their best work from the past that you may never have seen. But first, let's get started with Ben Affleck's Big Gamble. He's playing a superhero in Daredevil. And now Ben has 15 seconds in our hot seat to set up the story. Daredevil is about a lawyer who was blinded as a child. Um, he developed these incredible abilities to know where things are and hear things far away, and that he sort of uh, tries uh, cases, you know, during the day and uh, fights crime at night. What do you want? Justice. Ben becomes the horned vigilante to avenge his father's murder, but his quest is sidetracked when he falls into an unexpected romance with another skilled fighter, played by Jennifer Garner. You sure you don't want to tell me your name? My name's Electra. Colin Farrell also stars as Bullseye, a hired assassin who can turn any object into a lethal weapon. When Daredevil makes him miss a target, Bullseye sets his sights on revenge. The devil is mine. If you're going to make a comic book movie, this is the way to make it. Mm -hmm. I had such a good time watching this film, and it didn't make me feel stupid. That's what I liked about That's it. That's good. It's, well, I mean, so many films, are, you know, talk down or pander in some way or just get silly. Mm -hmm. This one, I think, is true to what it sets out to be. And as far as Ben Affleck is concerned, he's just right in this part. This because is a very good part It for is, because when he puts on that costume, he's not Ben Affleck anymore, first of all. He's probably a stuntman in most of the cases. Uh -huh. But he's that superhero. So you're not looking at Ben anymore. His face is covered. When you see him act, he's, he's doing a really good job making this guy three-dimensional. You know, I forgot it was Ben Affleck, and I didn't know if I'd be able to do that, but he really seems haunted here. Yes, and he, and he disappears Darker, into the character. He really does. The voiceover was particularly effective. Mm -hmm. I also thought Jennifer Garner was an excellent partner for him. She's yes. physically right for him. They have great chemistry together. I was just looking for some honey. Could you help me out? Right in front of you. <laughs> well, could you be a little bit more specific? What are you... Blind? Yeah. I am so sorry. My favorite scene with them together is the one where they're first checking each other out and doing that wonderful martial arts sequence, and they're sort of talking each other through and acting, but also doing these amazing moves. It's, it's kind of like a musical number, almost, where the, the purpose of the musical number is to advance the plot, exactly. show the characters who they are, only this is a choreographed uh, fight number. They manage to do both of those things si simultaneously, but that brings me to one of the parts of the film that I think is a little incoherent. I don't think they do a good job in the beginning of setting up exactly what his powers are. Mm -hmm. We know that he He's blind, and so all the rest of his senses are accentuated. But then why does that give him the, uh, the ability to apparently almost fly? You know, I was wondering about that. Overall, I'm going to say I thought this was a great character and a dark superhero, and I like that. Plus, you have such a wonderful supporting cast down the line. Mm -hmm. Colin Farrell, well, I mean, he's been moving up the ladder, you know, uh, rung by rung, film by film in terms of public awareness and in terms of his popularity. This, I think, could push it way over the top. He made me miss. I wish they had, pu they had pushed the dark stuff a little bit more. We've never seen such a flawed, vulnerable superhero before. We could have seen him being tormented by his, the vigilante. I'm, I'm a little tired of tormented superheroes myself. But he is one, and that's the well, he point is, here. But they don't, but they don't beat it. They don't beat it to death. I think they, they could, don't beat they it could sharpen death. it up, and I would have liked that even more. I think it's um, it's flatter than it needs I to be. I think you're quibbling more than you need to. They're on the right track. <laughs> I like this one a lot, and I'm giving it an enthusiastic, hot vote. Well, I had a few quibbles, but I'm still voting hot. All right. We're going to move on now. As Ben's younger brother and his best friend also have a movie opening this weekend in limited release, 
Casey Affleck and Matt Damon star in Jerry as two friends who get stranded in the desert during a hiking expedition. Why didn't you just go to the spot? I did. You weren't there. I've been there. I'm just sitting there. Okay, so I'm watching this film, and there's Matt Damon and Casey Affleck, Ben's brother, sitting in the car, driving along the road, and this goes on for about five minutes, and I'm mm -hmm. thinking, where is this movie going? And you have your answer right there. Uh, well, no. I ended up being very intrigued by this film. It's a very mesmerizing, magnetic film that actually ends up being about the human condition and what they go through. Is the human condition that boring? Uh, I didn't think it was boring. Oh, I was kind of The human amazed. condition is in worse shape than I suspected. This, if this is, is the representation. This is like, no, this is like the anti-action film. It's also an exploration yeah. of the well, convention of filmmaking. Mm -hmm. Nothing happens, but everything happens. Life and death happens. Their friendship happens. Antagonism, camaraderie, desperation, hopelessness. Uh, Mostly desperation. And well, it, ta <laughs> it takes some chances, and I think no, many of them pay off, and I appreciate the experiment. Yes, it's a daring film. Yes. It dares to bore you for two hours, or almost two hours. It dares to send you up the aisle screaming, saying, <laughs> no. what am I doing watching this movie? It has a lot of daring elements, but it does have experimental things that I did admire. Mm -hmm. I admire its efforts to try to do something really out of the ordinary. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's not, for instance... But they didn't work for you, those things didn't No, they work didn't. For you. Ultimately, they did not work, because, because ultimately I was not drawn in, I was bored. Of course, the screenplay is credited to Matt Damon and Casey Affleck. I don't know how much of it was improvised on the spot, how much of it may have been written I think some of it of, was. It has that feel to it. Right. Well, that's a good argument for writing a screenplay first, before you shoot the movie. I thought it was an experiment that worked, and it was a, it was a pretty transformative experiment, actually. I'm going to vote hot for Jerry, though it's not for everyone. I'll warn you. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say not because I, it was a challenge for me to get through it. My choice this week is the color purple, which is just being released on a two-disc special edition DVD. For me, the color purple was the best film of 1985 and earned 11 Oscar nominations. Steven Spielberg directed this screen version of Alice Walker's Pulitzer Prize winning novel about a black southern family that spans 40 years. Until you do right by me, everything you think about is going to crumble. Whoopi Goldberg made her film debut here as the central character who triumphs over a life filled with cruelty and abuse. And Oprah Winfrey is a revelation in her film debut. The DVD features enormously entertaining and enlightening interviews with Spielberg, author Alice Walker, and cast members including Oprah and Whoopi, who describe the heady experience of making this timeless, controversial, and groundbreaking American film. Also in theaters now. I'm gonna make you wish you were dead. Kate Hudson and Matthew McConaughey make an attractive couple, but they can't save how to lose a guy in 10 days. The scenes are overlong, the story's insincere and contrived, so the film gets two not votes. So it's come back in what, two minutes? While not a perfect film, Deliver Us from Eva won us over with its fresh approach to a romantic comedy and the irresistible performances of Gabrielle Union and LL Cool J. We agree, it's hot. End of story, the bad lady singing! Still to come on Hot Ticket. You know the stars who are going for the gold. That's kind of weird, huh? We'll tell you who Oscar left out in the cold. That is a performance that was grossly underrated and overlooked. Plus, I'm the grown up. We'll pick the can't miss performances the stars gave before they were nominated. Guess again. That's coming up next on Hot Ticket. More women choose. The one, the only, Tampax. Oh, very good movie. Number one romantic comedy of all time. <laughs> OK. 
Okay, I'll take it. Was this your idea? No. It just showed up. My Big Fat Greek Wedding, now on DVD and video. Okay, crispy chicken sandwich and a Diet Coke. Uh, would you like to add on a snack-sized fruit and yogurt parfait for a dollar? Absolutely. What, am I like the millionth customer or something? No, ma'am. Uh, anyone can add on from the dollar menu for just a dollar. This sort of thing never happens to me. Are there going to be balloons and confetti? Well, it comes with granola. Yes! Got a buck? You're in luck. Every day at McDonald's. With so many of your favorites on the dollar menu, you can build the perfect meal for you. Yay! This is Ocean Spray White Cranberry, a delicious, less tart taste made with all-natural white cranberries. Ocean Spray White Cranberry. Crave the wave. Welcome back to Hot Ticket, everyone. Some of the top talent in movies woke up to great news earlier this week when they received Academy Award nominations. But that doesn't mean we agree with Oscar 100% of the time. As always, there were a few surprises, both good and bad. But let's start with the positive here. I am just thrilled that Diane Lane received a Best Actress nomination. She joined Salma Hayek, Nicole Kidman, Julianne Moore, and Renee Zellweger. And Diane Lane has paid her dues, oh. to use the expression. She has paid her dues well, and she's done such good work for so long. It's about time. I have friends out there. I would have loved to have seen Maggie Gyllenhaal in this category, however. I think that is a performance that was grossly underrated and overlooked. We're talking about Secretary yes. with James Spader and Maggie Gyllenhaal. I like dull work. Julianne Moore could take home two Oscars. She's also nominated for Best Supporting Actress, along with Kathy Bates, Queen Latifah, Meryl Streep, and Catherine Zeta-Jones. I'm also happy that Meryl Streep was recognized for adaptation, because I think that is just a wonderful performance. Susan Orlean, nice to meet you. Maybe I could talk to you for a second. I thought she was fine in adaptation. I would have preferred to have seen Toni Collette, however, in this category. For which film? She has done exactly so much work <laughs> for About a Boy. Okay. That was probably the fullest role. She was wonderful in that. She was also in Changing Lanes this year, and she was also in uh, The Hours. You can't shut life out. No man is an island. Well, the supporting categories are often the most crowded and the most competitive because so often they are the best things about a movie. Uh, even when a movie isn't that great, there may be a really great backup performance to the star. I'm so glad the Oscar voters remembered Christopher Walken and Catch Me If You Can. Oh, so am I. Lovely, wonderful, warm, and heartbreaking performance, really. And he's so good so often. Are you giving me a Cadillac? I'm giving you a Cadillac. Do you know what would happen if the IRS found out I was driving around in a new coupe? He's in competition with Chris Cooper, Ed Harris, Paul Newman, and John C. Riley. The Best Actor category ranges from first-time nominee Adrian Brody to Jack Nicholson, who has 12 acting nominations in his career and three wins. And I think, obviously, the person who's going to be disappointed that he wasn't in this category is Richard Gere, who did so well at the Screen Actors Guild and with the Golden Globe Award. And given that Chicago won 13 nominations. You're not kidding. Uh, so er almost everybody who was available to get an Oscar nomination got He has to be feeling overlooked. I don't like to blow my own horn but believe me if jesus christ had lived in chicago today and if he had five thousand dollars and he'd come to me things would have turned out differently now there were no big surprises among the best picture nominees they are chicago gangs of new york the hours the lord of the rings the two towers and the pianist and again there wasn't a lot of choice beyond that but what's interesting is all these movies opened in december all of them yeah. And that sends, I think, a terrible message, just well, a terrible message to Hollywood. Right, and I think uh, one movie, for me, that stands out here that should be in this category is Minority Report. All right, Howard Marks, where are you? To me, that was one of the best pictures of the year, completely overlooked. What about About Schmidt? Now, About that Schmidt got robbed. Film. Talk about robbed. That okay. got robbed. It got robbed not only a best picture, but more significantly, best director and best screenplay. Yes. Yeah, that's one together. of the best screenplays of this or any year. I can't let this happen. I will not allow it. I mean, look at these people. Now, here is a perplexing situation. As old as Oscar, how do you nominate the Lord of the Rings for best picture, but not Peter Jackson for best director? Now, apparently, the directors wanted to honor Pedro Amadovar, who made the wonderful film Talk to Her. 
and they put him in that slot that might have belonged to Peter Jackson. It was nice to see Roman Polanski, who's a wonderful filmmaker, who's had a very erratic career. He's mm -hmm. made some horrible films, but he's made some extraordinary films. Mm -hmm. uh, but he, of course, cannot attend the ceremonies because he is a fugitive from justice. And a lot of people have never forgiven him. A lot of people don't even want to hear his name. The fact of the matter is, he made an extraordinary film based, to some extent, on his own experiences. Exactly. Now, what the Oscars have always managed to do, for better or worse, is separate the person from the work. I think that's probably a good choice. Now, on that basis, uh, this film is certainly worthy, and so is he as director. Don't go away when Hot Ticket continues. I want to marry you! Our special look at the Oscar nominee. I thought, who is this guy? What is this force? We'll name the best movies you've probably missed. Where the hell have you been all these years? That's coming up next on Hot Ticket. Closed captioning provided by...